Hello everyone, welcome to our first how-to video for our LiveWedge streaming HDMI mixer, recorder and switcher. So in front of you, you can see our LiveWedge unit. So let's take a tour around the unit. First of all, on the front, we have the device display and then we have the four buttons which can be used to switch inputs. We then also have the selector wheel and the two buttons here which are used for browsing through the menu functions as OK and Cancel. So if I turn it around, on the back we have the various inputs and outputs. So let's go along from the side. So first of all we have the SD card slot. This is used for recording and we'll discuss that more in a second. So then we have the network input. This is for if you want to stream over a wired network connection. We then have the four HDMI inputs. These support up to 1080p 60 frames per second input. So most things currently on the market you can input into the live wedge. We then have the preview and the program out. So the preview out will show you all four inputs on one screen and the program out will show you currently what's being broadcast out of the live wedge as is. And then finally, on the end here, we have some standard audio inputs. These are if you want to input a standard stereo audio device. Okay, and back now to the recording function that I mentioned. The LiveWedge supports SD card recording. So you can record SD cards to an any SD card at 720p resolution, 30 frames per second, or 1080p resolution and 20 frames per second. And one of the best features of the LiveWedge is its streaming ability. We support multiple streaming services. You can stream to Ustream, YouTube Live, and if you have your own streaming service, we can support RTSP and RTMP servers. Okay, everyone, let's have a look at the various video mixing effects that the LiveWedge supports. We'll start with the simple cut effect. It's very easy to use. All you have to do from the dashboard on your tablet is just use two fingers and touch the input that you'd like to change. So for example, we have input one selected. If we touch with two fingers, easily switches to input two. Or we can switch input four, we have the Cerebro logo, and two fingers, you switch to that. Okay everyone, let's have a look at the mix video effect now. So if you'd like to automatically mix between inputs, all you have to do is from the effect channel, select mix, then double tap on the input you'd like to switch to. So for example, input four, we have the servo logo. So let's double tap. As you can see, automatically using the mix effect, it switches. So back again to input one. That's the automatic mix effect. You can also manually control this you'd like a different setting. So from the mix effect channel you can select add, then go to the mix effect and from here you can enter the switching time in seconds. So if we tap here and then we can select for example five seconds. So this will enable a longer mix effect and select OK and make sure it's still selected and then again double tap to change using the mix effect. So let's again go to the servo logo, double tap, and you can see there the mix effect takes five seconds instead of the shortest time before. So back again to input one, one more time, double tap, and there's the mix effect. Okay, let's look at the wipe effect next. So again, from the effect channel, you can select wipe or also add it if it's not already selected. So we already have wipe here, so we can select wipe. And again, it's very simple, just double tap to the input you want to switch to and you'll get the wipe effect. So let's go double tap and you can see the wipe effect. Okay, if you'd like to control the wipe effect, you can select add to add a new wipe effect. Select wipe from the menu. And from here, you have various things you can do. 
So at the top here we have the rate, the switching, how long it will take to switch using the effect. So we have it set for one second. Uh, if we change it, we can make it a bit longer. Let's change it to say three seconds. And from here you can also select if you'd like to reverse the effect of the various patterns. So first of all let's select a pattern. Let's select one of the ones down here. And you can either then select that to reverse the direction of the animation. So let's set up here. We've got that all set up. OK. Select OK. And double tap to the input you'd like to switch to. And then we have our selected effect comes up. And one more time, just so you can check. Okay, so you can also manually control this using the sliders at the bottom. So let's switch back to the logo first. And then say we want to switch to input one, use the slider at the bottom and use your finger to control the speed. So there we are, you can see the effect. You can go as fast or slow as you want. If we switch back again, you can go very fast. Or again, very slowly. Okay, everyone, the next effect we'll look at is the PNP or picture in picture mode. This is very useful when you have two inputs that you want to display on the screen at the same time. So, again, as we did before, we go to the effect channel, select an empty one, and touch. So, picture in picture is at the top already selected. So we have the four inputs here, and this controls which of the sub-smaller screen you want to display. So we've got the Servo logo on input four, so we'll use that one. After selecting the correct one, touch next. And from here, you can control the various picture-in-picture -picture frame functions. At the top here is the frame weight. This controls the thickness of the border around the smaller subscreen. So you can choose any size from 0 all the way up to 9 pixels. And next to it on the right, you have a preview of what it will look like. At the moment, black is selected, so it's a bit hard to see. So let's change to a brighter color, green, and you can see there in the preview. At the bottom here is the pattern. This is where you'd like the picture-in-picture -picture subscreen to display. So at the moment, we have bottom left selected. We can change that around. Let's move it, say, to the top right. Select that one, and then touch Next. So now we have a preview screen. From here, you can alter the size of the subscreen. So touch, and you can move around. Or if you'd just like to alter the size, you use the pinch and drag. Let's put that on the top right corner a bit bigger and select OK. So now you can see on the output we have what we selected. So we have the uh, number one input in the main screen and the Cerevo logo on the top right in the subscreen. Another way to set up the PNP feature is using the direct PNP function. So instead of setting up in the effect channels, what you can do is select an input and long tap and then drag the subscreen to where you'd like it. So for example, the Cerebro logo, let's drag it up to input one and from there we can then adjust the position and also the size as we did before. And there you can see the logo is displayed. So let's do that again once more. So let's use input 2 this time. So input 2, let's drag, touch, and the screen will come up. Then drag that to the input where you'd like it. Input 2. And the input will be displayed. make it a bit smaller. And double tap and then it will appear 
on the screen that we have it in the bottom left so that's the direct way of doing PNP rather than setting it up through the effect channels okay our final video effect we'll look at is chroma key this is very good if you would like to add some say special effects or titles to your video feed so if you can see from the setup we already have a chroma key on channel 3 it's a short cartoon video explosion and we're using green as the chroma key color so to set it up again go to the effect channels touch add for an empty space and select chroma so from here select the input where you've got the chroma key already selected so we have input 3 is our chroma key so select input 3 and next from here you can control the various chroma key settings so this will allow you on the right left here sorry this will allow you to select whichever chroma key color you've got so we've already got green as our chroma key color so we've set that for the green portion of the screen but if you have a blue or another color chroma key you can select that from there you can also manually select the colors using the yuv buttons up here okay if we select okay and we've got our chroma key ready to go so you can see on the preview screen we've got our input number two and then the chroma key is set up so to further control it using the sliders at the bottom so our chroma key is on input three so we've locked that but we can still select our different inputs to display the chroma key on so input two is currently selected if we switch to input one we then keep the chroma key but we also have input one selected and we can try again input four and again our chroma key is displayed but we've switched inputs okay that's the basic functions of our chroma key feature okay next let's look at live streaming so with the live shell you can live stream to various services including youtube ustream and your own RTSP or RTMP servers. So first of all, to access the live streaming functions from the tablet control panel, at the top, touch live. Okay, this will load up the live streaming dashboard. So from here, if you have already used our Live Shell Pro device, you will probably be very familiar with this dashboard. So basically, in the center we have the live streaming window. We've already set up our test Ustream account. And from here on the right, you have the basic control functions for each of the live streaming features. So from here, you can select, for example, the network connection, if you would like a, the aspect ratio, and also we can switch and see the volume and also if you'd like to add closed captions to your uh, video display when you're live streaming. So we already have our Ustream account set up. So let's uh, reload and see if we can stream live. Okay, it takes a there's short delay uh, when you select live. But there we are. We have our live stream. Uh, you can see at the top here we're inputting 1080p. And then we're live streaming. You can live stream it up to 720p, which is what we're doing. And at the bottom here, this is the bandwidth status. So this will change if your connection has a variable speed. It will change and warn you if the video functions are going to be affected by the lower streaming speed. Also, one more thing to be aware of is once you're live streaming, if you go back to the inputs, while you can control the various inputs and switch between them, the preview function is disabled. So we're still live streaming, but if we want to switch, say, to uh, 4, which is the Cerebro logo, we can switch to that, but the preview function on the tablet is disabled. We go back to the Live tab, and you can see we're streaming. OK, let's look at the recording function for the live web. So we can record on the live widget to an SD card. It's very simple, very easy to do. First of all, if you want to change the recording settings, go to the tool setting icon, tap that, 
and then go to the recording tab. From here you can select the quality. So we have various resolutions and either high, middle or low quality. So let's go with 720p resolution, 30 frames per second and high quality. Okay, after you've done that, just tap the tool settings again, back to the dashboard. And from there, at the top here, we can select record. And then at the top here, the record button comes up. It's very simple, just press and you'll start recording. As with live streaming, once you start recording, the preview function on the tablet is not displayed. However, you can still switch between the inputs while you're recording. So for example, we can switch to input four or any of the other inputs. And you can see they're being displayed on our out monitor. So if you want to stop recording, again, just tap stop and then just stop recording. And that's it for the recording function. Very easy to use and a good feature that we've added. Okay, so if you don't have a tablet, you can still use the live wedge, and instead of using the tablet to control it, you use the buttons on the front of the device. So from here, you can see our live wedge. We have the four input buttons here. This allows you to switch between the inputs. So for example, let's switch to input four, and tap to change. We have the mix video effect selected, so that's why we're using. So in between to select each one. If you want to switch the video functions, it's easy to do. Just use the wheel to select, touch the middle button, and then we'll switch to the cut function. So again, we can switch between each one very easily touching the buttons. The jog wheel can be used to control the various effects. And also you can select from here the recording function using the circle down here. It's very easy to use, just start and stop using the button and select again like you would with the tablet function. And if we go back out, this button is used for cancel. You can also alter the settings for the device in here. It's very easy to use. And that's the how to control the live shell using the device buttons instead of a tablet.